Welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's another edition of Mom at Home. This is another very special musical story time. And today I'm very excited to welcome the author of our book that we'll be reading along with you, Kathleen Kroll. And we're going to be reading M is for Music. And actually, I'm going to welcome our very special um, one of my co-workers at the Museum of Making Music in Carlsbad, Mr. Dave, and he's going to tell us, give us a little brief introduction. Are you ready, Dave? I'm ready. All right. So, so today we have award-winning children's book author, Kathleen Kroll. She received uh, uh, several awards. She's gotten for individual books. She's also gotten, gotten uh, an award for uh, by body of work. And most recently, she, she got one from the California Reading Association's Armin R. Schultz Literary uh, Literacy Award, and that's for basically promoting social justice through books. Um, she has over, I want to say over 70 uh, books that she has. Uh, there's so many of them on the list that we, we're just going to break them down in categories. I went to the internet and looked up her website, and they have a listing of categories, which makes it nice and, and easy to follow. Um, she has a series on women who broke the rules. She also has one called The Lives Of, which talk about lives of actors, of uh, musicians. She has another one of What Was. Um, so What Was the Boston Tea Party as an example. Uh, she has one called, a series called The Giants of Science. So she, she has Einstein, Darwin, things like that. She has another series called Kids Guide to American History. Uh, she has another one with the oldies but goodies, and we were just talking about what really happened in Roswell, and that falls under that category. Um, and we also have the one we're going to be doing today, M is for Music, and it's under the picture book category. So with that, I'd like to welcome Kathleen Kroll, um, and she can give us a little background and a little bio. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for that introduction. Um, it's wonderful to be with you. My favorite thing to write about is music. I'm passionate about music, like I imagine a lot of people watching this are. Um, music has meant so much to me during my life. Sometimes I feel like it's almost saved my life in, in so many ways. It's just been a real lifeline for me. And when I started writing, um, I gravitated toward books about music. And I wrote uh, several musically themed books. And then I decided to try to write an alphabet book about music. And alphabet books are, um, they're than you might think they are. They, you have to come up with great words for each letter of the alphabet. And it's, it can be very tricky, depending what you're writing about, finding words for Q or, or X, Y, Z or J or some of the other, uh, stranger letters, but with music, there was so much there to write about that there were like the perfect words for every letter of the alphabet. So that got me really excited about wanting to show how uh, how much music uh, rules, and and there's so many different kinds of music, kinds of instruments, and something to appeal to everybody. And I actually think that music is more important than ever. So I'm so glad that you have taken this opportunity to highlight this book. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathleen. I'm so excited to be presenting this book here today and have you with us to read it. That's going to be, we're going to have a lot of fun. Are you ready? I am. Right. Are you? I've got my copy of the book. Let me go ahead and bring it up on the screen for everyone. All right, there we go. The cover of M is for music. And now I'm going to open up my book so I can flip along with us. Okay, let's go. M is for Music by Kathleen Kroll and illustrated by Stacy Innerst. Little copyright information for all those who make music. And from Stacy, looks like for Lynn and our background music, Stuart, Olivia, and Jake. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, here we go. A is for Anthem and Accordion. An accordion, an anthem is, is a, a national, a song about na national pride. For example, the Star Spangled Banner would be an American anthem. And we don't usually play anthems on the accordion, but you could. Uh, so I wanted to get in some two good A words here. A is also for alto, 
Louis Armstrong, Aria, and a cappella. Awesome. I I just fell in love with the accordion too, and do you know why? We had an exhibit at the Museum of Making Music all about accordions. And you could pick up an accordion and play along with it too. It was a lot of fun. And Louis oh, Armstrong, how? we have an example of Louis Armstrong in the Museum of Making Music, how he helped uh, popularize the idea of improvisation in jazz music. Perfect. B is for Beatles, all-time favorite group. And here we go with George, John, Paul, and Ringo. And I should tell you, before I forget, that the art for this book was created by Stacey Inners, and he paints on tin. So all of the paintings in this book are painted on tin, which gives them a really unusual feel. And Stacey has a great sense of humor. If you look at these beetles, their bodies are actually bee bodies, <laughs> the bodies of bees. And they, there's so many renditions of the Beatles, but I think that this is my favorite version of the Beatles ever, the way Stacy drew them. And B is also for Bach, bass, banjo, Brahms, band, blues, beat, bluegrass, Broadway, ballad. And that is a ton of B words. I love the fact that the Beatles are also Bs. That's fantastic. And a little known secret. Did you know this, Kathleen, that uh, my favorite Beatle is Ringo? Do you know why? Because I play drums and so does Ringo. And it's funny because Ringo and Bongo are right next to each other, the two drums. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I, when I was young, I had crushes on the Beatles. Uh -huh. uh, and my first crush was uh, Paul McCartney. I just adored him. And then later in my teens, I switched over to John Lennon. He became my favorite Beatle. They're all really wonderful, talented individuals. Mm -hmm. C is for CDs for carols, Cajun, and country and Western. And CDs is uh, a little bit old school. Um, we don't see them so much anymore, but back in the day, CDs were the way we listened to music. And I have CDs, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna tell that we stream everything, but um, you could listen to anything on CDs, country, Western, Cajun, carols, um, all kinds of things. And some other C words on this page are calypso, castanets, cello, clarinet, and crescendo. CDs, I remember CDs, I also remember. Do you remember cassette tapes too? I believe that's another C word. Did you have another C word? Did you have any cassettes? I had lots of cassettes, boxes and boxes of them. I decided not to go back that far in the past because I was afraid kids would really not know what a cassette was. That's okay. But kids, if you want to learn about cassettes, ask your, ask your family, ask your folks or your grandparents. They will know, and they will remember having to wind that little magnetic tape back into those cassettes just in case they came in spooled. But CDs helped uh, pave the way for even um, different types of ways that we listen to music. I think we have MP3 players now, and our phones have uh, uh, the capability of playing music on it. We can listen to all these types of music. Mm-hmm. Okay, D is one of my favorite pages, because D is for dancing and drumming all around your house. Something we can all do, something that brings us all satisfaction. I even think you should have a dedicated corner of your house just for dancing, to have dance parties. Um, some other good D words are disco, do, re, mi, duet, and dulcimer. Awesome. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite pages, too, because I'm a drummer. All right. Drums represent. E is for Elvis. Energy and encore. Elvis had just about the most energy of any performer ever in and people were always screaming at him for encores, going, more, 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 Elvis. Um, he's, some other good E words are ear, electric guitar, elevator music, echo, and uh, Elvis again. Look at that sneer on Elvis's face. I know, he's into his music. So, I yeah. wonder, based on this, I, an encore, now an encore, what is that encore? Encore means you want more, more, more of something. So after Elvis would have been done with his concert, maybe all the fans loved it so much that they shouted Encore and he would play a couple more songs, huh? Correct, correct. And elevator I'm music sure. too, that's a great word. I wonder if there's any Elvis songs that have been turned into elevator music. <laughs> 
I know a lot of Beatles songs have been turned into right? Apple Music. Probably I'll just do. <laughs> that would be weird. F is for finger snapping folk songs. Like this land is your land where you can snap your fingers to it. Um, F, some other good F words are falsetto, French horn, flute, flamenco, and falala. Awesome. That is fantastic. Falsetto, that's a very special word. That's something that singers do, right? They sing above the highest note that they can and don't use a, like their natural voice. So if I was, you want me to try and sing falsetto? Can you sing falsetto, Kathleen? I'm not going to try, but I would give Freddie Mercury as a really That's good example. A perfect example. <laughs> I, I am not going to try. I'm going to, I take back my, my offer to I sing falsetto. That's a great idea. <laughs> Let me turn the page. There we go. G is for one of the most popular instruments of all, guitar. Uh, guitar started in Spain. I mean, the first ones came in Spain, but now everyone plays guitar. And some other good G words are Gilbert and Sullivan, groove, and gong, and gospel. Awesome. I know, I love the word gong, but we have a gong inside the Museum of Making Music that if you visit, you can come and play that gong and bang it as hard as you want to. It makes a racket, I'll tell you that. And then, I, very cool. well, go ahead, Kathleen. No, I was just going to say that's very cool. And also, I, I, I pondered... Uh, if there were any gong and guitar duos. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> I have not. Well, But there's always a first. <laughs> there's always a first. that You can grab a guitar in the museum and a gong and see how it works out. There you go. I think it sounds cool. And now H is for Hildegard and harp. For people who don't know who Hildegard was, she was a famous composer. She's the first woman composer that we know by name. She lived 800 years ago. Her music is gorgeous. And she's special to me because the artist, Stacy, actually gave me the painting that he made of Hildegard. So I have Hildegard hanging up in my dining room, which is very cool that to is. me. Wow. Uh, but try to listen to her music sometime. It's, it's actually gorgeous. Some other good H words are hem, harmonica, harmonica, and harmony, humming, and handle. Very nice. Very nice. I is for instru interesting instrument. And this fellow has a whole bunch of instruments going on all over his body. He's a one-man band of instrument interesting instruments. It's hard to say. Some other good I words are interval intonation and improvisation. Yes, I, that is an interesting array of instruments. It looks like he improvised to create that instrument configuration. He has a bass drum, looks like a trumpet or a bike horn, a harmonica on there. He's got a banjo lele, or maybe it's a banjo, I can't tell. And then cymbals on his knees. It looks like accordions on his feet. He's got the whole the whole deal there. All right. The whole band Very right there. Cool. J is for jazz, and jazz was an African-American form of music that is now considered to be America's best contribution to world music. Um, very great jazz musicians. Um, J is also for jug band, jitterbug, jive, jig, jukebox, and jam session, Wonderful. which it looks like you guys are having. Yeah, I love seeing that drummer in that jam session. We have some really wonderful jazz musicians in, in the San Diego area where we're from. I know uh, a gentleman by the name of Gilbert Castellanos, and he works with a group called the Young Lions. And these are students who are students of jazz music, and they host jam sessions, I'm sure, and are young studies of this uh what is considered, yeah, the uh, authentic American style of music that was uh, developed. Mm -hmm. K is for one of my favorite kinds of music, and that's klezmer. Klezmer, in case you don't know, is uh, Jewish party music. Countries, and it's just great for dancing and singing along to and just really getting your whole body involved. Um, I just love it. K is also for keyboard, karaoke, another great form of music, kazoo, kettle drum, and kick up your heels. 
awesome. I know we've we were lucky at the Museum of Making Music to feature a lot of great klezmer bands in the area. Uh, there's a gentleman in San Diego. His name is Yale Strom. Have you heard of Yale Strom before? Uh, I have. Yes, I've seen him. He's a very good, right. fant- fantastic performer and keeps the uh, tradition of klezmer music alive and well, not only in, in our area, San Diego, but all across the country, but I think across the world, he really helps talk about that form of music and, and its traditions and moving it forward. And his wife, too, is a, a phenomenal musician. So lots of great things about that, about Yale and klezmer music. Hmm. Yeah, anytime there's a klezmer band in San Diego, I try to go see it. Um, L is for loud. And an American singer named Robert Merrill once said, when in doubt, sing loud. And that means... Don't be afraid, be brave, be bold. Even if you're not sure of what you're doing, just sing it out there. And it also means um, cranking your music up loud. I think a lot of music sounds better, rock and roll in particular, but almost anything that you really like sounds better when you crank it up and play it loud. So that's a good music word. Um, L is also for lyrics and listening. Very important music word. Very, very important. Although one caveat, if you're going to play it loud, be sure to wear your hearing protection. You want to keep protect your ears, too, at the same time. It's very important. That is true. That is true. <laughs> M is for music. Music teachers, where would we be without them? Mistakes, everyone makes them. And Mozart makes you smarter. Some other good M words are melody, mariachi, and Motown, and maraca. And over here is Mozart, and he's doing the right thing, plugging up his ears to protect himself against all of the loud voices that are going down on down below on the bottom of the page. Maybe some potential, maybe some potential mistakes in that in the in the crowd. I know when I was learning music, I made my fair share of mistakes too, and I have oh. I have a music teacher to thank for helping me through those. Oh yeah. N is for Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is a ballet that you tend to see around Christmas time. It's by Tchaikovsky, beautiful music. And it's considered one of the, or it's considered the piece of music that, that's introduced more kids to classical music than any other piece of music. And some other N words are Nocturne, Nashville, and Noise, and Notes. I think uh, what, why I fell in love with the Nutcracker at a young age was because of the different themes that they had. And a lot of those themes represented candy and sweets. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they, that's how they got me as a kid. I remember those. I love that. It's very appealing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is for orchestra playing old McDonald had a farm, which is not something that orchestras typically play, but they could. Um, some other good O words are opera, octet, Oboe, organ, overture, and one man band. Fantastic. Octet. Octet. That reminds me of the word octopus. Now, I know that an octopus has eight arms. Does that mean an octet has eight musicians? Correct. I think it's usually for voices, like an octet oh. is, means eight different voices Wonderful. singing a piece of music. And I can only imagine what it would sound like for an orchestra to play Old MacDonald Had a Farm. <laughs> or even Old MacDonald Had a Farm sung in opera style. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> P is for piano. And practice is my favorite instrument. I have my piano right behind me. Um, and a lot of people's favorite instrument to play. People love their pianos, and I love this little tiny boy sitting at this great, big, enormous grand piano. Some other good P words are percussion, pitch, prodigy, Prokofiev, piccolo, performance, and polka. That is a big piano, and piano, it, that, that was my first instrument too. It was, it's a good instrument if you are learning music. It's a great place to start and that it's a great gateway to other instruments too if you learn that you love piano or love music then you always have a uh, something to go to and then you can step forward from there absolutely Q is for quartet and a quartet is made up of four 
musicians, usually uh, three, usually stringed instruments. Um, and then when you add a piano to it, it becomes a quintet, five musicians. And with this group, you can see they're even playing fours and fives uh, in the artwork. Um, some other good cue words are quiet, that comes in handy, a uh, quick step, quarter note, and quadrille. And in case you don't know quadrille, it's a fancy dance, uh, kind of like square dancing, only even fancier. And its most famous version is in Alice in Wonderland where Lewis Carroll has lobsters, a quadrille. It's one of the funniest scenes of Alice in Wonderland. Awesome. It took me a while to see the, the musician with the five on him. I, I didn't see that. I, and I, I love the, that they're all playing fours, except for the one who's the fifth musician playing that five. Mm -hmm. R is for radio playing reggae time and rock and roll. Also, our words are requiem, rhythm, recorder, and rehearse. Wow, look at all those radios. It looks like they have, you got some old radios and new radios there, all kinds of different styles. S is for street musicians singing show tunes, spirituals, and serenades. And some other S words are salsa, solo, symphony, soprano, synthesizer, and sitar. Fantastic. T is for trumpet, trombone, and tuba three brass instruments that require a lot of muscles in your lips to play these instruments. They build up your lips. And this T is also for trio, which this group of musicians is a trio. And it's also for tom-tom, tenor, piano, and triangle. Wonderful, I know. If you're interested in brass instruments, our very own Dr. Jonathan Piper just did a presentation on Monday all about brass instruments and how they work. And I like the fact that Trio is on this page and there's three musicians playing brass instruments. Mm -hmm. Very cool. U is for ukuleles in unison. And ukulele is from Hawaii. It's typically featured in Hawaiian music. Um, and the other two words on this page are ukeki and yuli yuli, which are other Hawaiian instruments. Wow, fun. That, I love these two ukuleles in unison. And unison, that means playing together, right? Correct. Awesome. They both are playing together, and they both have grass skirts on. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Very traditional. V is for voice and vibration. And here's an opera singer whose voice is vibrating so much that she breaks the glass that's in front of her. Um, it's, theoretically, it's possible. I, I haven't ever seen it, or I definitely haven't ever done it, but um, theoretically it's possible. Some other good V words are vocals, uh, volume, violin, viola, and virtuoso. Very fun. I noticed too, and I, I, I just noticed this as well, is she looks like she is an opera singer. She looks like she might be an opera singer in a composer called Wagner. Is that, does that look familiar? It does. And then I it does. I think Wagner wrote a, uh, a piece called Ride of the Valkyries. Is that correct? Another good V word. Another Valkyrie. V word. And, <laughs> and pro tip. It, and I, oh, go ahead, Kathleen. Oh, Sorry. go ahead. No, my bad. I was just going to mention that violin and viola are two instruments that I used to play when I was young. Oh, wow. Um, so they're part of my, my repertoire. I don't play those anymore, just piano. Wow, fantastic. If you want a pro tip on how to sing and break a glass at the same time, all you have to do is stand over a very hard surface, hold the glass in this hand, and sing until you accidentally drop the glass. <laughs> uh, don't try that at I home. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, w is for something that I cannot do. W is for whistling. I've never been able to whistle, and I admire people who can do it. Or you Pucker your lips and the sound comes out. Can't do it. Some other good W words are woodwinds, washboard, world music, and waltz. I, I have a confession too, Kathleen. I can't I can't whistle very well either. My my children can. They can do it. 
Yeah. I guess it just either takes a lot more practice than I've done or something else. I wish I could. Yeah. Another W word. I wish I could whistle, but I can't. Um, X is for experimental music on a xylophone. Wonderful. You know, I love this picture. And I, I, I love xylophone because it's another per percussion instrument. But this picture reminds me uh, of a experimental, experimental jazz musician we had at the museum, Jason Marsalis. And he is the brother of Wynton Marsalis and the other Marsalis brothers who are very well known in jazz music. And he play, he doesn't play xylophone, though, but he plays vibes and he holds his mallets just like this gentleman here. Uh, two mm. mallets in each hand and he plays some really, really great music. So I love this picture. And I love the use of X in xylophone and experimental music. That's amazing. And look, I just noticed this myself, but in the art, the xylophones are making an X. They do. So there's another. I just noticed That's that. That's really cool. <laughs> okay, Y is for something else I can't do. Y is for yodeling. Yodeling Yankee Doodle, which would be very tricky to do, but it's you could try. So this fellow has got a macaroni feather in his cap like Yankee Doodle. Um, some other Y words are Stomu Yamashita who is a Japanese musician, and Yo-Yo Ma, who is a fabulous cello player. Amazing. Yeah, I can only, again, I'm going to use my imagine to be to th hear what it sounds like to yodel Yankee Doodle. That's I can't imagine what that's like. Try it at home. You're right. I'll try that. Maybe I'll do that outside for all, my, all, all of our neighbors. <laughs> and Z is for Zydeco, Zither, and all forms of zippy music including Zapatiero and Zarzuela, two South Americans form, form of music. And that is the musical alphabet. I hope this inspires you to go and create music around your house and outside, if you can get outside and just have fun with it. That's wonderful. Oh, I love this. You have a glossary in this book as well that kind of talks about all of the different words that we explored throughout the book. I do. I give some more information about each of the of the highlighted words um, so that you can learn a little bit yeah. uh, in case you don't know about some of these musical things. That's great. And these are some of my favorite quotes about music. Without music, life would be a mistake by Friedrich Nietzsche. Music is your own experience, your own thoughts, your wisdom. Charlie Parker. And here the music of voices, the song of the bird, the mighty strains of an orchestra, as if you would be deaf tomorrow. Helen Keller said that and she would know because she actually was deaf. And one of my favorite quotes is by Frank Zappa, another good Z word. Without music to decorate it, time is just a bunch of boring deadlines and dates by which bills must be paid. <laughs> All right, kids, if you don't know what that means, just wait until you're older. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that one. All right, Kathleen, thank you so much. We've come to the end of your book, but there are other books that you've put together. I have three of them shown here. Gonna Sing My Head Off, The Beatles Were Fab, and Lives of the Musicians. I love music, and I love writing about it, and I'm so happy that you found this way to bring music to kids and their families at home. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. And another note, too, that I had... Oh, let me see here. Where am I going? I am going to bring back... There we are. Now everybody can see us. You also have, and I just have to mention this because it was, it was kind of a personal thing for me, but you also you do a lot of these historic uh, figure books and a lot of history books for for students and families of younger younger children. And one recently that you put together was uh, one about John Glenn, right? Correct. Uh, John Glenn was an American hero, like the greatest hero of his day for circling the Earth to orbit three times. So much fun. I, I personally love it because I went to a high school named John Glenn High School. So that was that was uh, a nice connection there. Well, that was actually, I think that might be the in the last lines of the book, is that John Glenn has more schools and buildings and roads named after him than just about anybody. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Kathleen. Thank you for writing such wonderful books. I hope if uh, anybody, everybody that's out there listening, go check out some more books by Kathleen. And in the meantime, feel free to come back and uh, 
to the Museum of Making Music's website on Friday. We're going to be hosting another Mom at Home session. We're going to be talking about guitar effects pedals uh, with Jonathan and special guest Henry Kaiser. And then next week we have another lineup of Mom at Home sessions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until then, we hope you have a great day and take care, everyone. <laughs>